Hello, how's it going folks? It's me again, your boy Tabo, and welcome to another 3JS tutorial. So as you can see in front of me, I've got a scene of the tutorial that we're going to be creating today. So I'll be taking off from where we left off. As you can see, uh, we had the highlight selected object, which was already done. So I'll be taking from there and we're going to add this UI HUD thing over here. And yeah, so everything will be working accordingly. So we'll be able to switch between the different post-processing filters and all of that good stuff. So without further ado, let me just jump right into it. Okay, over here, I've got a file open already. This is just a duplicate of lesson seven. So we'll just be adding on to it. There just might be a few things that we might change, um, not necessarily the code itself, but just uh, to better organize things. Okay, so one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this and then I'll paste it over here. Okay, so everything will be on top. And since we're gonna be having post-processing effects, so we might as well do the import for that. So we'll be using dot screen film shader, luminosity shaders. So we'll operate the shader under bloom pass, film pass and colorify shader. So yeah, just make sure that you import these things. And here are some variables that we'll be using. So we're gonna use the screen width, screen height, multi-shader render, and multi-shader pass. You will see what all of these will be doing as we progress with the tutorial. So since for this tutorial, we're gonna be needing two canvases, we have one already, which is responsible for rendering the main scene. So we're gonna need a second canvas, which we'll use to render on our UI element. So we'll have canvas with an ID of canvas2. And we will also embed our SVG element inside our HTML file. So this is the SVG that we'll be using as our UI. Okay, so to make things easy for you, I will have a template with the SVG element already embedded in it. So I will have one like this it will probably not have any of this other stuff. It will just be lesson seven, including this SVG element over here, so that uh, that is easy for you to manage. Okay, so now we've got our SVG element already. So now we're just gonna do a couple of things. I'm just gonna copy and paste the code over and then explain what it's doing. Okay, so here we created a variable which is referencing our SVG over here according to the name of the ID. And then we give it the width of the screen width times this value over here. Same thing with the screen height. And these are variables which will hold uh, the size of our SVG, the width and the height. Okay, so this is how we access it. Then over here, we've got a variable which is referencing our foreign object. Now in the foreign object, there's an element inside our SVG. Foreign object elements allow you to embed any HTML element inside of an SVG element. So that's what it does. Because SVGs are separate or different from HTML. So in order for them to work together or for you to be able to put, for instance, a div inside of an SVG, then you would use foreign object as the container of the div and that's how you'll be able to then put it inside of an SVG element. So this is what this is doing over here. Inside the SVG we already have a foreign object and this is what we're going to use to put the, our canvas element inside. Okay, this is a variable that's going to be giving us information on the selected mesh. So it will give out the name and then the matrix value output group is just another variable which will be showing the transformation values of our selected object. What this value is going to be holding and updating according to the selected object. Then the big button group, these are the buttons, these buttons over here. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm creating a variable uh, which is going to hold an array which contains all of these buttons. So you should be familiar with this by now. This is just an HTML uh, method 
that targets elements with the same class name. Okay, so over here, we're just um, going through the array and we're just going to add this event over here, a click event, which is going to then switch the shader according to the button that is clicked and the shader that is connected to that particular button. This is what that's going to manage. So this is just basically the width of our foreign object and that's the height of our foreign object. Okay, so this is a variable which will represent our main background element. And over here, this is the width of our main background and height. So already we've got a renderer we're using for the main scene. So that is that right there. So we're gonna need to create another one. So over here, we create our second renderer. And then once that is created, then we're gonna put that or append it inside of our foreign object. So in order to do this, we're gonna need two cameras. So we already have one camera. So we'll create a second one. Well, the settings for the camera are the same. So there isn't much difference there. It's almost like a duplicate really. So we're gonna need a second camera and we're gonna need a second scene. Okay, so there is our second scene. So we've got a composer and render pass over here. We're gonna need to create a second composer and render pass. Okay, so we'll say composer two and that will be render pass two. And so inside of this, we're going to use our second renderer. So we're going to use rent yes, that over there. We're going to use scene two and camera two. Okay, so now we're going to create the different composers for our for the different uh, post processing effects. So here are the variables def of. So composer bloom, composer dot, composer sobble and composer film. Next up, we will create some shaders. So this is film pass. This is bloom pass dot pass and solo pass. And these are the settings thereof. So we're just gonna then make some give solo some values, some uniform values. So here it is the resolution. It's value dot X. That's equal to window dot width times uh, device pixel ratio. So we do that for X and Y. And then next we will do one for uh, luminosity pass and colorify pass. Okay, so here are the variables. So we're just gonna then adjust the color for our uniform. So these are the values for that. Okay, after that, we're gonna then end our, add our render pass. And then we add our second render pass to our composer two. And we're just gonna continue creating more of these for all the composers. So here they go, so composer bloom. There we go. So you just do this as well for all of them up till composer film. So this is how you must then assign them. Okay. So one other adjustment that I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this over here and I'm just going to move it down. Okay. So we're just going to place it down because it's, it'll be better organized that way at the moment. It's, it can be a bit confusing later on because we want all our functions to be in the same place. So we don't want them to be all scattered all over the place. So everything we're just gonna bring down here. So after the camera position, so this is where then we can paste that like that. Okay, so once we're done with that, then we can just make some space. Okay, I created a function and I called it HUD info update and inside I will pass it an object. So the HUD info update is managing the information that will be displayed on the HUD about the selected object. Okay, so that will be the name of the object and that will be the transformation, scale and rotation information of the object. So the object that will be passed over here will be the selected object and it will go through it, check its ID and then give you the related information that will be displayed on the HUD. Okay, I created a variable called scene to mesh list. So this will just be containing the 3D objects which will be displayed on the HUD. These objects will only be existing in scene two. You will not see them in our main scene. So they will be in a different scene and only on the second canvas will they be rendered. So through this loop, I'm going through this, the children in scene two and I'm adding all the mesh objects inside of this array over here. 
Okay, so the second, the other function that we're gonna create is called cam to mesh pause. Well, it's camera to mesh position. That's what that stands for. It will be past the selected object. So when it goes through the selected object, um, it will then check what type of mesh it is. And if it is a cylinder, then what it will do is then it will position our camera to the position of the mesh so that that particular mesh will be in view. So what you see displayed on the second canvas is basically what is in front of this camera over here. So this camera will be constantly changing position according to the selected object. Okay, this is a function called switch shader. And what this function will be doing, it's, it's just mainly gonna be changing the type of shader that we'll be using according to the button that has been pressed. Pass, if we click on the button for bloom pass, then it will make this variable here, multi-shader pass, be equal to this target over here, which will be the relevant composer for that particular post-processing effect. Inside of our intersection, where we will run these functions. So I came to mesh pause, we give it the selected object, also here, selected object. And inside our window resize, we're gonna add this as well. So we're just gonna update the screen width and we're also gonna update the width of our SVG. This will be responsive. So inside of our render function, we're also gonna manage the position of our canvas. Okay, so this will be determined by these values over here. So it will constantly be updating and checking to see if there's any changes to these values and then adjusting the position of our canvas according to that. And one other thing that we need to do is we need to create the base meshes, which will represent the different parts of the main model. So when we select the leg, which will be a cylinder, then this will be the reference. So this will be what will be displayed on our HUD. So we need these four objects and this is what will be rendered on the HUD using a different camera inside of a different scene. And we also need to name them because we're gonna be using this name in order to know which mesh needs to be rendered on the camera. Because when the object is selected, we're gonna go through that object and check what type of object it is. And then we will come to this scene and then we will have a look at which one of these objects matches the name and we'll also create another variable and this will be called chem center anchor. Okay, this will just be managing the camera. So the camera will be looking at this particular position. We haven't yet assigned it a value, but we will do that later. Okay, so in our render function, then we will then rotate the four meshes that we created. So the cylinder, torus, box, and sphere, we'll just give them this rotation so that they're not static. And then here we might as well also then set the camera look at to this cam center anchor position. Okay, we will still change the value for that. We haven't assigned it as yet, but we will do that later. So here we'll just make sure that the camera is always looking at that position. And one other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a switch statement inside our render function. And this switch statement is what's gonna be managing our multi-shader renderer, okay? So according to the value of that, this will just be representing the button on the HUD. So when that button is clicked, the multi-shader pass will have its ID, okay? So it will have a look at it and then it will see if it is raw, then it will then assign the multi-shader renderer this particular composer. And that's what's gonna be managing the different post-processing effects according to which button has been clicked. And then after that, then we will, okay, so then we will use our multi-shader renderer to render the scene two and the camera two. I'm just gonna move this up here so you can just do that as well. Okay, so most of the stuff is done. Let me just go through the rest of the file to make sure that everything is up to date. Okay, here I will assign our cam center anchor these values over here in the Y and X. So give it these values. And one other thing that we need to do is to add the base meshes that will be rendered in our scene two. So I'll just add them over here. So scene two dot add sphere, torus, box, and cylinder. And another thing is we have three other lights that we're gonna be using. So I need to create those lights as well. These are point lights. So in order to save time, I'm just gonna duplicate these and then I'll just change the name. So we'll just make this light four, five, 
and 6. And then I will add these to the scene. So I will add them to scene 2. And just do it like that. So now these are also in our scene 2. And uh, one other thing is we need to then assign them their values. Okay, position them accordingly. Okay, I'll just put them under here. So for light 4, this is the position. So we can just give it these values over here. So light 4, light 5, and light 6. So we also need to do the same for our meshes and the camera. Okay, so the meshes that we just created, we're also then going to give them these values over here. So first we'll say camera 2. These are the values for camera 2. And this is for our sphere, cylinder, box, and torus. And one last thing that we need to do is to create a style element. And then inside the style element, this is where we're going to position our SVG element so that it is on the side or next to the main model. Okay, so inside of our style, I'm going to paste these values. So this is managing our SVG, the position, the top right and all of that. So make sure that you add all of these inside of your style element. So this is just for when you're hovering over the button so that the cursor changes into a pointer. And this is to change the color when you're hovering over the button. That's what that is doing over here. See, the cursor is changing into a pointer and the color. Okay, so that is being kept in that position because of this over here. So now that we've got that, um, that should be it. So let's have a look. So I will basically run my server over here. Okay, my server is already running, so you can run your server over there and then go to port 8080 or 81, depending on which one you're using. Usually it will be 8080 because I'm running one already here. So that is already occupied. So it will be 8081 for me, but it should be 8080 for you. So I'm just gonna update that and there we go okay uh that is acting funky but that is not a problem it is only because on our event listener on window restore for our orbit actually so every time i'm orbiting then it calls render so that's why that is acting so funky but that is not a big deal something that we can easily sort out so it is over here okay uh, if i just comment this out then the craziness goes away so you see, I can still orbit and everything. So everything is working fine. See, everything is working like it should. So let's go over there. See, I've got our dot shader, got our bloom shader. We have our sobble shader and we go back to our raw scene or film. Okay, so everything is working out as planned. So yeah, pretty much that was that. It looks different, of course, to or the original one that I had created, but it doesn't really matter because this one kind of gives away why everything looks the way that it does because you can see quite clearly that this is a canvas right in the middle because I had a black background in the previous one, but it doesn't matter at the end of the day, you know, it still serves the same purpose. And yeah, you can then play around with it, uh, add any extra stuff that you want to it you can play around maybe with some svg animations over here you know uh animate that over there whatever you want to do so this is well yours to do what you want with it so yeah uh, so that will conclude the lesson for today so i hope you enjoyed it and till the next one love and peace i'm out